Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. Welcome aboard. We're mixing things up today. Let me explain why. You are going to hear from Tom Burlingame, the owner of XL Fishing Charters, and get the latest CQ Salmon Fishing Report at the end of our program. And, as always, we'll tell you what's hot here in the Pacific Northwest, brought to you by your Puget Sound Area Sportsman's Warehouse stores, but you're going to hear that at the bottom of the hour. The reason why is because we want to continue our conversation about Lower Columbia River gillnet fishery reforms, or the lack thereof. This week, we're talking to Bill Twite with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, who's going to explain more. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, John, and good morning. Well, good morning to you. Let's start off with the gillnet reform itself. It was adopted by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and by the state of Oregon, too, in 2013. The original intent was to move gillnet fisheries off the main stem of the Columbia and into off-channel areas where they would net less wild and threatened fish, both salmon and steelhead, and they were supposed to develop a new means of using nets to catch these fish outside of gill nets that would result in better survivability if the wrong fish were caught. Fast forward to 2019. What has happened? It's proven harder to develop those new gears than we'd initially hoped or that our commission had assumed when they developed the initial timeline, which called for complete phase out on the Washington side of gill nets in the main stem by 2019. Some of these gears are gears that have not been used in a long time. In order to use them, we also have to have really solid science that tells us exactly how many of the fish that are handled and released, what percentage of those survive until spawning. Conducting those scientific assessments has proved to be more difficult, as well as just continuing to find willing partners, particularly for testing gears like pound nets that require very high capital investment. We are continuing to make progress on that. So, Bill, we live in the greatest country of the world. In World War II, we went from nothing to becoming a superpower in six years. John F. Kennedy said we're going to the moon, and by God, in six years, we were on the moon. But here, in six years, we can't seem to go ahead and figure out how to improve fisheries in terms of the nets we're using. Wasn't money set aside in 2013 for the purpose of helping these new, more selective netting fisheries? It was. We underestimated the amount that would be needed, though. (laughs) Your your analogy is great, but when John Kennedy uh, did that, uh, he pretty much opened up the, the, uh, the money floodgate. Was the money mm-hmm. that was allocated, was it used? Most of it was used. The reason some of it wasn't used was it, it was specifically purposed for activities that assumed success in the first steps. And because we weren't seeing the success that we believed necessary in those first steps, we were never able to really access the money that had been specifically allocated. Well, let's talk about what the commission decided to do on March 2nd in terms of rolling back some of these reforms. Now, the biggest thing I saw was that the allocations of fish going to sport anglers versus commercial gill netters, it was supposed to increase for sport anglers. It's actually going down now, isn't it? This was a short-term actions vote. They have yet to vote on whether or not they would actually want to make any long-term modifications to the policy or change the basic objectives of the policy. And you clearly and, and well outlined the basic objectives. This vote didn't change those basic objectives. The commission said because we're delayed on implementation for the necessary alternatives, we don't want to lose a commercial fishery in the interim because it's important for us to achieve the, the long-term goals of continuing to have an economically viable commercial fishery and long-term goal of having a commercial fishery with the power to remove large numbers of hatchery fish after most recreational fisheries have, have been able to access those fish. Want to hear more of this conversation? Tune into our sister show, Northwestern Outdoors Radio, or look for the podcast later this week on Stitcher, Podbean, or YouTube. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation.
Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's not the normal time we do this, but it is time to tell you what's hot. Here in the Pacific Northwest, brought to you by your Puget Sound Area Sportsman's Warehouse stores, which have all the spring fishing and turkey hunting gear you need for success this season. Congrats are in order to Ben Rosenbach of Snohomish. He won the Everett Blackmouth Derby last weekend with a 13.63 pound Chinook. 402 anglers participated in the Derby and 109 salmon were brought into the scales at Bayside Marine. This is part of the Northwest Salmon Derby Series and their next stop will be in Bellingham in July. One thing that's not hot is an opportunity to dip a net for smelt on the Cowlitz River this year. That's the word from WDFW, which reports a late run of these fish in the river, which, while better than last year, is still not good enough to support a fishery. However, the increased number of smelt may bode well for dip net fishing in the future. Doing our weekly check at NorthwestFisherReports.com, the poster Quadfather checked in with the latest news from Duck Lake out at Ocean Shores. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not a cheery report if you're a bass angler. He shared his bass club had a small tournament there last Saturday, but when the 10 boats came back for the weigh-in, they had not a single bass to show for their efforts. Though, they did bring in three trout, and one of them was as big as a nice bass, weighing over three pounds. The water was super muddy, and there is talk the water quality has been changing a lot there over the years, according to the Quad Father. Let's hope the bass fishing picks up as the water warms this spring. East of the Cascades, we can report that earlier this week, Potholes Reservoir was still frozen over, and so was Burke Lake in the Quincy Lakes area. That's where the Trout Derby, put on by the Quincy Chamber of Commerce, has been postponed yet again, this time to April 6th. On the bright side, the temps are pushing into the 50s, and that ice ought to be melting soon. So plan some April trips east of the mountains and expect some good trout fishing after the ice finally comes off. Last but not least, don't forget to renew that fishing license of yours because it expires next Sunday. And now you know what's hot and what's not here in the Pacific Northwest. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Log on today. Marine Area 5 near CQ is open for a special Chinook salmon fishery, and Excel Fishing Charters is ready to take you out for a great day on the water. One of the great things about this fishery is the fact that you get to take home not one, but two blackmouth a day. And Captain Tom Burlingame has the knowledge and experience to help you get that done. Need a place to stay? Excel Fishing Charters can help you with that, too, because they also operate the inn at Nia Bay. Find out more about fishing with Excel Fishing Charters at ExcelFishingCharters.com. That's E-X-C-E-L FishingCharters.com. Book your trip now. Are you looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer affordable platforms to reach thousands of listeners. Find out more by contacting John Cruz through his website at AmericaOutdoorsRadio.com. Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Before we leave you today, we're going to check in with Tom Burlingame. He's the owner of XL Fishing Charters and co-owner of the Inn at Nia Bay. Tom, I understand you've been pretty busy fishing the last few days. How's it been? It's been great, John. We've been doing both uh, CQ Salmon and, and Link Hot has opened up at Nia Bay, and we've been doing that also. Well, let's start off with the salmon. I just haven't heard a whole lot of reports. What's that fishery been looking like, at least for you on the last trip you were out on? It was good fishing. Uh, I would say we landed 20 fish uh, for two people that day and, and ended up with uh, four keepers. Uh, there was a lot of smaller fish, 20 to 21 inches, and a few uh, that were keeper size that had fins, and of course we have to release those. But the bite was great, and uh, the re- reports I hear from the other boats has also been very good. Uh, DQ is going well. Wow, I'll say that's just dynamite. That's about as hot as it gets. But let's talk about the lingcod, too. When did that season open up and how's that been going so far? 
It opened up on March 9th uh, in Area 4 in the ocean, and uh, we've fished Link Cod the last four days, and uh, I haven't been any later than noon getting back in. It, it, the bite has been great. And is it two Link Cod or one Link Cod per person? It's two Link Cod a person, and of course you can still keep the seven rockfish as, as always. All right. Well, there you go, folks. The fishing is hot. Right now, out on the Olympic Peninsula, whether you are after salmon off a of CQ or after lingcod and rockfish out at Nia Bay, and the person to book your trip with is Tom Burlingame, the owner of XL Fishing Charters. Go to his website to book a trip now. It's xlfishingcharters.com, spelled E-X-C-E-L, fishingcharters.com. Tom, we'll check back in in a couple of weeks. Thanks, John. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio, 950 KJR.